Namo Namaha and welcome back. Now, to get our study of the Devanagari script underway, let's begin with first the vowels. Again, to a, a thing to keep in mind, vowels in Sanskrit appear in two different ways, two different forms, depending on whether they're in a syllable by themselves or whether they come after a consonant. So, for example, when the word starts with the letter i, the ikara, it looks like this. Uh, if it, one example is the word ishuhu, which means arrow, it'll look like this. Uh, I'll, I'll refer to these full form characters as the letter plus the word kara, which le literally means the making of that letter. Uh, and this is how we generally refer to every single letter of the alphabet. So this would be the ikara. Now, when E comes after any consonant, it's going to take on a different uh, diacritic form that's going to attach to that consonant. In Sanskrit, these marks are called matras, and that's how we'll refer to them going forward as well. Uh, so here, this would be the E matra. Uh, so when E is written... Um, in the word vidya, which means knowledge, it appears as this matra that attaches to the Devanagari character for wa, the vakara. Uh, another thing I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, each letter in Devanagari will have that top bar, uh, except for the, the letter om, the omkara. Uh, and we'll always write this top line as our last step. Uh, in fact, the best thing to do is to use a, a piece of lined paper. And when you're writing, write the letters of the word first, uh, going below the lines on the page, not above the lines. Uh, and then fill in the line kind of at the end when you're done with the word. Uh, so, for example, here's how I would write my name, Adhisha, on a piece of paper. So in this segment, uh, we're going to look at how to make the vowels uh, in their independent forms. Uh, and then, when, then we'll turn to the consonants. Uh, and then we'll look at how the matra vowels will attach to the consonants. Uh, the first vowel is u. Uh. It's written in four steps. Step one is to make a shape of the three, which, which we did when we did our omkara, if you remember. Step two, then, is to make a little horizontal bar that uh, starting a tiny bit below the center point of your three. Uh, then the step three is to make a vertical bar going down that attaches from the uh, that attaches onto the horizontal that you've just made and goes all the way down to the bottom. Um, step four is going to be then to fill in your top line. Notice that the top line for a uh, for the akara doesn't go over the three section of your letter a, uh, and that's it. And one other note: the matra form of the a. Uh, is nothing, zero, it's zilch. Every consonant character that we'll be learning how to write will already have the uh built into it. So the letter k, for example, will look like this. Uh, it already has the uh built in. Uh, this is something North Indian learners, by the way, really have to be careful about because in modern North Indian languages, uh, the uh at the end of a word will often get, usually gets dropped so that North Indians will say ram instead of rama. In Hindi or Punjabi or Marathi, it's fine to say Ram, but in Sanskrit, it's always going to be Rama. Never ever is he Ram. Okay, so next we have the letter A, which is very simple. First, you make your letter A uh, with all the steps that we just went over, and then you add one extra vertical uh, bar to the right of your A. Uh. This vertical bar, by the way, is going to be exactly the matra form of A. Uh that you add to all your other consonants. So when you have your syllable ka, for example, it'll be the ka with your vertical bar to the right, ka. Uh, then we have the letter i, the short i, which is written in two steps. The first step is to start at the top line uh, and make a kind of S shape uh, and then give it a looped tail. Uh, the font actually here doesn't have a loop, but generally when we handwrite it, it does have a nice visible loop at the bottom. The second step now is to write the horizontal bar. Uh, next, we, we're going to have the long E, which is again pretty simple. There's three steps to it. First, you make your short E, which is the 
S and the loopy curl below. Then you add a curl on top, going up above the top line, curling it to the right uh, to make your long E. And then you add your top line and you're done with your E kata. The next uh, letter is the vowel, the, the short vowel, U. Uh, this is also made in two steps. Step one is to start at the top line and then make a partial double loop. So it looks like you're number three, but with kind of the head chopped off. Sorry about the violent imagery there. Uh, number three, but it had to be done. Uh, step two then is to make your horizontal top line and voila, ukara. The long vowel ukara is uh, like the other long vowel is gonna be based off of the short ukara. Uh, first you make your short u, uh, then you add a kind of tail to it that goes from the right downwards. Uh, usually you start the tail from just below the pinch point of your double curl, the same, the same kind of place where we had made our horizontal for our letter U, uh, if you remember. Uh, the next vowels are our vocalic R's and L's. These are very tricky, I'm not gonna lie, but thankfully you won't have to write them very often as they really only occur very, very, very rarely. Uh, short vocalic R uh, has four steps. First, you make a wedge shape to the left, uh, and then step two, starting at the kind of pointy part of your wedge that you just made, you're gonna make a loop going to the right, but then at the end, you're gonna give it a little tail that looks like a C. Uh, it's like a French cédille, if any of you have ever studied French. Uh, step three is gonna be to make the vertical bar that starts at the top line and goes right through the middle uh, of your character. And then the final step is to make the horizontal top line. Now, like I said, the vowel R, uh, the rukara, only occurs at a start of a handful of words that you'll encounter, but actually they tend to be pretty important words uh, in the language like rishi, which means a sage, or ruta, which means cosmic truth. Uh, next, we're gonna have the long vocalic R, and like the other long vowels, is based on the short vowel. You do the first step the same way, make the wedge on the left, then after you make the loop on the right, you make a tail, but you give it a double C uh, instead of a single C below it. And that's it, the rest is the same. You have the vertical bar as your step three, down the center, and then you draw your horizontal top line, and you've got your rukar. The next letter is your vocalic lr. Uh, actually, when you learn the regular l kara, your l, in our next segments, you'll see that the vocalic uh, lr is basically the, the same consonant l plus that little c-shaped tail that we just did for our vocalic r, for our vocalic r's. So the first step is to make a kind of like a heart shape uh, from left to right. Uh, instead of closing your heart down at the bottom though, put a curly C-shaped tail at the end. Uh, then the step two is to make a vertical bar that goes uh, from the top line down to touch your heart. Make sure that it just touches onto the right side of the heart shape. Uh, then you make your horizontal bar on top and you have your rukara, your vocalic L. Moving to the complex vowels now, the next one uh, is the E kara. It's super easy. First, you make a kind of crooked angle going downward and to the right, starting from the top line. Then you make a second vertical that only goes now halfway and slips sl just a slightly back towards the left. Uh, then you draw the top bar and voila, you have your E kara. The next vowel is I and it's built off of the A. Uh, first, you make your A kara, uh, but before you make your top line, add a slanted line going to the left above your top line of your paper. Um, and then you make your top line and you're done. Incidentally, this slanted line on top is actually gonna be this, the matra form of your A kara. The, the, uh, this is the form that A takes when it, when it gets added to a consonant. You'll be able to see uh, the same matra on top uh, appearing also in our last two vowels, O and O. O and O are both built off of our first vowel, the O kara. The O kara is made in six steps. First, make your O kara in three steps. You got your 
three shape on the left, then a little horizontal, then your vertical bar from the top line. Then you add another vertical bar, like we had done when we made our ah, if you remember. Then you add our slanted line that we just learned on top. This is what we had just done with ai. Uh, then you finish with your top line and you have your o kara. The last vowel, O, is exactly the same as the O, but with one extra matra on top, one extra slanted line, so that you have two slanted lines coming from that uh, vertical bar on the right side. So there you have it. This is how to write all of the vowels in Devanagari. Again, as a reminder, uh, this is only takes place when the vowels occur alone in a syllable. Usually it's at the start of a sentence. Most of the time, vowels are going to be coming after consonants. And when they do that, uh, they don't have these independent forms, but instead they're going to be taking what are called the matra forms. Uh, in our next segments, we'll now look at the consonants first. We'll go again varga by varga in different uh, videos. And then uh, we'll look at how to attach the vowels to these consonants. So thanks for listening. Be sure to practice, practice, practice these letters as much as you can. Use the UBC Sanskrit site if that helps uh, to kind of uh, get yourself up to speed. And we'll see you next time. Punar Milamaha. Dhanyavadaha.